Hello makers. So first of all, first things first, happy Father's Day. So a big shout out to all fathers out there. Secondly, a very massive shout out to a guy called Tariq Ali. Um, I think I pronounced it right. Uh, he found out that Spanner Hands is sponsoring this channel and made this awesome animation. That thing just blows my mind, so make sure you check them out in the video description. Next, I want to talk about a couple of things, and I think it's about time I start doing something on this channel. Remember a few days ago, I showed you like a massive, I think it was like 50 or 60 hour print on the CR10 for a customer? Well, that is almost cleaned up. As you can see here, uh, there's lots of Bondo in different places because this was modeled in SketchUp. And the problem with SketchUp is that it doesn't do 3D printing very well. And you can fix things, but when a customer sends you a SketchUp file and asks you to print it, uh, it, it becomes, unless you actually have SketchUp, it's gonna be very, very, very hard to fix certain things. Because for example, these wheels were kind of suspended in midair on the model. So those failed, so I had to sort of dissect the model, take the wheels and print them all in one piece. Uh, but yeah, lots of cleaning up and I think it turned out absolutely awesome. Um, now I just need to spray paint it, finish it up, post-processing, and it will be good to go. Also, uh, what do you think? These, these three right here, those three are my resident 3D printers. And I have two Mark III's and the Matter Hackers Pulse. And the reason why those three will be the resident printers in here well, basically it's because they're the quietest ones. Everything else is either I'm doing some work on um, and then I'll be pretty much working solely from the, the garage, the makerspace, because uh, currently I still don't have an elevator. So it's been quite a while since I actually made something for you guys and show you how I make it. Um, and I found the perfect excuse to actually do something today. This is the Alpha YZ20. You saw me guys do a live stream. It's an okay printer. Uh, it can handle itself requires a few tweaks here and there, um, but it works. And then I have over here, the Alpha YZ10. Um, I've had this for a while, I've been printing with it, but there are a few things which really need improving on this printer. And I've been trying to print a large print in uh, nylon, in Talma nylon since yesterday. And it's been failing because mostly nylon is, slightly flexible and if you look at that over there you can see that there is quite a bit of a gap over there so it, it it's constantly the nylon keeps squishing itself and pulling itself out and i it, it failed on many many prints however if you look at the alpha yz20 it seems like they fixed quite a few things and if you look at this over here, you can see that there is like a piece of black plastic over there and that is 3D printed. And that reduces the gap margin quite a bit. So it makes it easier to print in flexible filaments. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna take that apart. I'm gonna design one in Fusion 360 and then I'm gonna print an ABS on the Race Pro 2. So the part itself doesn't seem that complicated. It's just a flat piece with a couple of extruding pieces on it. Um, so it shouldn't be that complicated to uh, design in Fusion 360. So the first thing you'll need is the part itself and a pair of calipers. And you start off with the base. At least I start off with the base. The, everything I'm gonna do might not necessarily be the right way to do it, but it's a way that gets me where I need to get to um, my way. New boy. So first things first, I'm gonna measure the side, which is about 12 millimeters by 32 millimeters. So 12 by 32. I'm gonna do a sketch. I'm gonna create a sketch on the top plane. And we're gonna do a rectangle of 12 by 32 by 12. And that will be the start of it. Next will be to align those holes. Now I can see that they're dead center, 
so it's just a matter of finding the distance from the edge to center of each. So the first hole is the one that screws into the extruder is 10.8 11 millimeters and the second one is 28. Let me just recheck. Measure twice, cut once, they used to say. In this case is measure three times, print once. So yes, 11 and 28. So I'm gonna draw a line, but I'm gonna enable construction. So that triangle over there, that means that it's in the center and that's fine. And we're gonna do another line, which is going to be 11 millimeters. And we're gonna do another one, which is 28 millimeters. Next is to find the diameter of the holes. Now, the first one is gonna host the filament, which is 1.75. So you give it just a little bit of tolerance. Um, the other one is gonna host an M3 screw, which means that it's three millimeters wide for the screw, but we're gonna do around 2.7 just to, you know, be able to tighten it up a bit. So we'll do 2.7 millimeters on that circle. And the other one will be about 2.5. Should be enough to have the filament go through easily. Next is the uh, outer diameter of these two parts right here, if you can see. See, there, let me get it out of the way. So we need to find the outer diameter of that and that. So the first one where the screw is gonna go is about seven millimeters. So we're gonna do that seven. And the other one, now this is going to be a bit weird because um, I'll try to put a magnified photo of it there. Um, it has a concave shape, so it's lots of different circles that are going to be introduced here. So we're gonna talk about the top part first, uh, which has a bit of a concave shape to guide, guide the filament through. So you have an outer diameter of eight millimeters and an inner diameter, it starts off at one millimeter or we can do it yeah, 1.2 millimeters um, thickness for the outer diameter, which we said was going to be eight millimeters. So eight and 1.2 millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna do a circle of eight millimeters there. And then I'm gonna do another circle which is going to be eight minus the 1.2 millimeters in thickness. Uh, so that's gonna be 6.8, 6.8, there. So those are gonna be the bases, um, which look decent enough. So the next thing to do is remove those construction lines or change them back into normal circles. So I'm just gonna click on the construction line, remove that, becomes a sketch. And that's a solid line. I'm gonna do the same for the rest. And now it's a matter of just extruding everything. So the thickness of this actual piece here is 2.62. So first we're going to extrude that by 2.6 millimeters. Um, then we're gonna go back to sketches and switch on the sketches. Um, this has to be extruded upwards because it actually is quite thick. So that has to be extruded by 4.5 millimeters. We're gonna extrude that 4.5. Next are all of these. Uh, same thickness, so this is going to be extruded by 4.5 millimeters. Now, the bottom part. So here, as you can see, uh, it goes through, and this is where it locks into the part of the extruder uh, where it goes then through the PTFE tube. That is about four millimeters thick, and it's 5.16. So we'll do five millimeters wide cell for that. Um, we're gonna do another quick sketch over here. Go to the circle. And it's at 5.2 millimeters. 
Okay. Now here's where it gets a bit tricky because this is, well, it's, it's narrower than this, but that's okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab this part here. I'm going to extrude it outwards by, I said four millimeters. Yes, so minus four. Next, we're gonna turn around, Whoop, hold on, there. I'm gonna grab that inner circle, I'm gonna extrude that downwards so it cuts into the extrusion we just did now. Now it's a matter of actually connecting those two. So this is where it gets a bit confusing because I don't know how to do this and I'm quite sure one of you is gonna explain it in the comments below and I'm grateful for it. But this is how I learn. Um, uh, and, and that's the whole thing of Fusion 360, it's delving into learning. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset a pane and I'm gonna move the side to the center of, uh, of the model, which is there, six millimeters, I'm gonna do okay. Then I'm gonna create a sketch on that pane. So whenever I choose to do a line, it's always gonna move on that pane in there. So what I want to do right now is choose the face first point, which is there in the corner. Then I'm gonna go on the front, just gonna see where that is and do that. Now what happened is that kind of created a loft. So next thing for me to do is Go down straight. And do another line there. Now what happened is it created that part over there. So this is where I kind of overcomplicate things even more. I'm gonna do a line, I'm gonna do a construction line. Um, let's do it from, because I need to create an axis of where the uh, revolve will happen. So I've kind of took a line from there to there, which is from one side of the cylinder to the other, and then sort of found the center and created a line there. And now all I have to do is just do that, go to modify, um, we'll do the revolve, sorry, create, we'll do the revolve. We chose the part, we're gonna select the axis, which is that, and now we have that, see? Bit complicated but it works and as long as it get to where as long as it gets to where I want it to get then I'm happy um, now it's just a matter of making it look well it's slightly pretty um, so we'll do some uh, chamfered edges uh, sorry some fillets I'll do that um, and that should kind of work. There you have it. Uh, slightly thicker. Uh, than the original one, um, might have miscalculated a bit. However, everything else seems fine, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove it on the U10 and see if it works out. And there you have it. Little easy fix. Uh, this is the one for the U20. Not only will that allow me to print um, in flexible filaments, uh, even if you print it slow, but it also makes it easier to guide the filament through because I used to have to play around because it kept on uh, hitting the threads inside that aluminum block. If you notice, they also removed the large screw that was tensioning the spring, and that is because that there's that extra bit of plastic part now to tension the spring even further. That, I, I'm gonna call that a success. Once again, 
What I designed in Fusion 360 might not be the most practical way of doing it, but I've always learned that it doesn't matter how you do something as long as it gets you to where you want to be. From there on, you can start learning to do things easier. It only took me like what, maybe in total half an hour from taking it apart, designing it, printing it. It took about eight minutes to print. Um, so it, it's really not that big of a deal. So get your hands dirty and try something out. Now there is something else I want to do to the U10 and that is extend the um, filament sensor switch outwards to give me a bit of leeway to pull the filament out when it runs out because currently it gets stuck in there and you have to undo everything. But anyway, um, for next time. In the meantime, that is it for me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, leave a like and let me know if you want to see more. Uh, share, subscribe, and as always, Happy making, guys.